You're tuned in to the only all sports talk network in the Middle East, IsraelSportsRadio.com. Hey folks, Kagan here. As you know, I'm always staying on top of the fitness world, keeping up with current trends. One form of exercise that's been around for ages and is currently being rediscovered is suspension bodyweight training. So if you're looking for a way to get in shape, improve your health, and train your body to move in new ways, then the X1 by Israel Gym Systems is for you. Find out more on our website at www.israelgym.com or look for our page on Facebook, Israel Gym Systems X1. Israel Gym X1, Higia Hazman. You're already using a credit card every day. Why not feel good every time you make a purchase? When using the HAS Advantage Support Israel Visa Card, a percentage of each purchase you make will be donated to your choice of 24 Israeli-based charities while still earning a reward point for every dollar spent. But wait, these rewards are even better than the standard rewards you get, especially when using them towards Israel travel with the best conversion rate on El Al's Matmid Frequent Flyer Program. Earn double points at some of your favorite supermarkets and restaurants in the U.S as well as discounts all over Israel. If you love traveling and supporting Israel, HAS Advantage is the card for you. Just give us a call toll-free at 1-866-6-ISRAEL. Sign up right now with the code ISR10 to earn 2,500 bonus points. That's 1-866-647-7235. HAS Advantage. Earn rewards. Support Israel. Offer valid for U.S. citizens only. Terms and conditions do apply. When dialing from within Israel, please dial 1-800-200-818. Israel Sports Dynamics specializes in football consulting, equipment, uniforms, and more. Great brands such as Nike, Russell Athletics, Shut Sports Products, and many more. Just one call away with over 30 years coaching experience with university and professional athletes. Harry Hill, owner of ISD, can advise you for all your sports needs. Call 054-581-3248. That's 054-581-3248. Or visit our website at www.isd. I-S-R-A-E-L dot com. If that's not easy enough, click on the ISD banner on the Israel Sports Radio website and be part of the game. Are you tired of paying for expensive gym memberships that you don't use? Are you frustrated by not seeing results? It's time for the X1. Israel Gym Systems is proud to launch the X1 Suspension and Bodyweight Training System. Lose weight, build muscle, improve balance, coordination, and flexibility. With your purchase of the X1, you'll receive a free membership to IsraelGym.com and access to our archives of videos and exercise plans. Sign up today at www.israelgym.com and get ready for the new you. Israel Gym X1, Higia Hazman. Broadcasting live from Israel. IsraelSportsRadio.com. Live from Studio C at the Cherry Hill Campus for the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, it's All Noise Radio's Sports Talk with... Welcome to the show, Sports Talk. Mm-hmm. Host Yossi G here all hour, and we've got a lot to talk about this week. We have a lot of action going on in all the different sports. We have NFL training camp coming up starting in uh, tomorrow. Uh, over the weekend, NFL training camp starting. And, of course, the news with Ryan Braun and the biogenesis scandal as to what will grip the talk of baseball for the next couple of weeks, certainly until it's all straightened out. And of course, not to mention the press conference yesterday of Aaron Hearn, of, uh, of the New England head coach Bill Belichick in regards to Aaron Hernandez. And of course, also what we heard in the Hernandez hearing all hour on this show, uh, all hour here on Sports Talk with the Sports Rabbi. And you can chime in on the conversation with a text or a tweet. Hit me up at the YASIG or facebook.com forward slash sports talk the sports rabbi. And of course, you can call into the show 856 330 4749 to get your opinions in and to, of course, voice your concerns or 
Give me a question. Shout me out. Have an argument. Let's have a good time because that's what I am all about. Now, for starters, we're talking about Braun. We're talking about Ryan Braun, outfielder, all-star, former MVP for the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, what Braun did or allegedly did, and he had tested positive for increased levels of performance-enhancing substance in his body. And due to a, we'll call it a technicality, a loophole in the system, he was able to get out from that test and was able to be exonerated for whatever, for all of what he was facing, for what he was being accused of. Goes ahead after his appeal and once he won and was said now he's good he's clean it's all it's all fine and then he goes out and and basically rips baseball it's drug policy and of course the tester that came to his house to pull up all his tests because hey why not um i'm gonna pull a page out from lance armstrong's book and that was uh defy defy and deny now, like Lance Armstrong's book, uh, Braun also pulled out another page from it, and that was to be found guilty, or in this case, with baseball, to have gone ahead and taken a plea bargain with the baseball powers that be to sit out 65 games for essentially the rest of this season. The Brewers are in no, nowhere... In, in line for contention for the postseason. So he essentially is out for the rest of this season, is able to come back next year, everything else, as if it never happened. And as the Denver writer, he's a, a sometimes columnist for SI.com, the Avalanche beat writer, Adrian Dater posted yesterday on his Facebook page that he doesn't understand where this – where you know, baseball is coming from here because what they're essentially allowing Braun to do is keep his NL MVP, have his contract honored up until, of course, his suspension. Next year, his contract, when he comes back to the Brewers, is as if nothing ever happened. His contract remains intact. And best part of it all, the Brewers are nowhere near contention. So he gets a kick back and relax and not have to add some wear and tear to his body for essentially 65 meaningless games. So what kind of message does this send to the players? What kind of disincentive is there based solely on this to other players to stay away from using performance enhancing drugs? The message that's being sent to them is, okay, if we get busted, then all is fine and dandy and we're still good to go. So, again, what is baseball sending? There has been so many mixed messages that you would you would think that even, you know, Taz, the Tasmanian devil from the Looney Tunes character would be all spun and, 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 and hung out to dry and not sure which way to go. Baseball from 1994, after, from after the 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 canceled season in 1994. During the 90s, when we were all, the whole nation was gripped by this baseball home run chase record trying to beat Roger Maris' 61 home runs from 1961. Everybody was, well, okay, I can't say everybody, but mo uh, many, many players in the major leagues were juicing. And it seemed almost as if baseball was fueling this juicing, allowing for it to happen, of course, turning a blind eye, but capitalizing on the player's juicing. The message that was being sent to the league, to its players, was if you juice, you get money. You get endorsement deals. We all profit from you juicing. So players did it. Then along comes Polly and finally decides that, you know what? Juicing's not good for you. Juicing's not good for the betterment of the game. So we're going to go ahead now and cancel it. I'm going to say, no, nope, no more juicing. All right, so we go ahead and we start testing players, and bam, comes the Mitchell report and shows that over 100 players in baseball have used or are using 
substances that are not allowed. Pretty crazy, if you ask me, how so many players are using it. Now, of course, most of the players are those fringe players, are the utility infielders, outfielders, who are either shuttling between the majors and the minors or are, you know, eight-year veterans, 34, 35 years old, and are looking for that last two-year contract, and then they'll retire. So they're going to juice to get to maintain that edge that they have in order either to stay in the majors or to be able to prove that they're worthy for another year or two in the big leagues. You rarely find players who have names that loom as large as Braun or, for that matter, Alex Rodriguez to be involved with steroids. We all thought it was a thing of the past. We all thought that was, okay, that was a thing of the 90s. Maguire, Sosa, Palmero. We all thought that was long gone in our rearview mirror, but lo and behold, last year was Melky Cabrera. This year it's Ryan Braun and possibly Alex Rodriguez coming to the forefront. Apparently there's going to be another 15 players to be named over the next week or so in connection to the Biogenesis Clinic of America down in Miami, Florida, or what used to be down in Miami, Florida, but the now defunct clinic that handed out these steroids to various players. When you look at the list of players who are named on the Biogenesis you know, forms, bills, whatever it was, whatever you may have, the really big names that stick out are, of course, A-Rod and Braun. But it shows something to the other players, to those who are in the minor leagues, to those who are trying to make it to the big time, trying to make it to the show. It tells them that if you cheat and you can, you can get away with it, but even if you're busted, even if you're caught, Big deal. It's fine. If you make it to the majors, if you make it to the professional level, to the pro level of baseball, and you have your contract right now, as it stands, you might be suspended for a significant portion of games, but then you come back, and all is fine, all is well, all is dandy, as if nothing had ever happened, because that's the message that they're showing. Look at what's happening with Braun right now, Based upon what's happening with Ryan Braun, there is no reason, other than missing games, for a player to not dope. There's no other reason for it. I don't get it. What Braun really has to, you know, think to himself is is not it's not so much about what he's done to his team, but you know, for this season or what he's going to be doing for the next 65 games sitting out. But what really it is for the Milwaukee organization as as a whole is that they also like the New England Patriots in terms of Aaron Hernandez. The Milwaukee Brewers also have been duped because when Braun came out after, uh, you know, after the whole thing, after he was exonerated, and, and whatnot after the testing and the subsequent, uh, uh, you know, positive, uh, you know, test results. And then he appealed and was found that, that it, it was a little bit bogus. So after, after all of that comes a, the last season's spring training and he's all like, yeah, I didn't do anything. All right. The truth is on my side. And he, so much so that he portrayed this, likable character, this lovable guy to the organization that everybody, the fans, the his teammates, the management all believed him. So much so that when it came time for Prince Fielder or Ryan Braun to stay on that team, it was, of course, Ryan Braun who was going to stay. Prince Fielder now in Detroit because there wasn't enough money for both of them. So not only does Braun dupe his teammates, dupe his organization this season, but he goes ahead and dupes the organization for possibly many years to come. No more Prince Fielder. He left to go to Detroit for money, of course, because there wasn't enough money for both him and Braun. 
But if this positive test would have come up a little earlier or if he would have lost, if Braun would have lost the appeal, or, you know, when, when the appeal happened, then perhaps it's Braun who ends up being a free agent and not Prince Fielder. And, of course, we're not dealing with the situation right now. So that's something that the fans in Milwaukee have to figure out for themselves and kind of get out from under their own rock because they're all, hey, Ryan Braun's our guy. Stay away. Don't, you know, beat up on him verbally. Guys, get out from under your rock, please. Realize the type of player you have on your team. He's a good player. He is. But look at what he did to your organization in terms of your future, in terms of what could have been. Certainly, Milwaukee wouldn't have offered him the contract that they did, and he certainly wouldn't have been getting a contract nearly as much from any other team. So he probably would have stayed with Milwaukee. But then the Brewers are able to offer a max contract to Fielder, and then because they could still field both players. Who knows if Braun would still be the same person, the same player like he showed and displayed in 2011. Maybe he would be a shell of himself, but we don't know that. But what we do know is that Braun really gets, you know, gets all the goods here. He's not kicked out of baseball for life. He's given a, a, a holiday vacation for the rest of the season, almost like a, hey, listen, man, your team sucks right now, so why don't you just, you know, Go prepare for next year. And he gets to keep his contract as is, minus, of course, what he's sitting out. So is that really the correct image that baseball should be showing, baseball should be displaying to the other players, to minor leaguers, to individual athletes who want to look up to baseball as being the first sport to implement such testing and, of course, then subsequently suspensions? Is this really the message that they want to send? When we come back from the commercial break, we'll have on with us baseball insider Jim Williams. You're listening to Sports Talk. <clears throat> All Noise Radio, powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Honey, again you're sitting here sulking? I hate my job, and I don't know what to do to change it. Get off the couch and go check out the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. The Connecticut School of Broadcasting? What's that? <laughs> the Connecticut School of Broadcasting offers a career and lifestyle change through a broadcasting experience you won't ever forget. Log on to GoCSB.com to find out how a career in broadcasting is for you and not just the people you see on TV or hear on the radio. CSB focuses on many aspects of real-world broadcasting Broadcasting and their knowledgeable instructors teach you through a hands-on approach so you're in the studio in no time. To find out how CSB can help you work in an industry you love, call 1-800-TV-RADIO or check us out online at GoCSB.com. Why work 50 weeks a year for a two-week vacation when you can enjoy your job every day? Don't just sit there. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO or log on to GoCSB.com. Thanks, Thanks CSB. CSB. All Noise Radio. The Noise. The Noise. You can't ignore. Welcome back to Sports Talk with the... And before we went to break, we had, of course, you know, we're talking about the, the hottest topics of the sports world right now. And really, it's all being uh, encompassed by Ryan Braun, by, uh, you know, Ryan. We have Ryan Braun. We have, of course, everything with Aaron Hernandez. But right now, joining us on air is, of course, the very own, our very own baseball insider, the former writer for the Washington Examiner, Jim Williams. Jim, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. Good to be with you again. Yes. Oh, by the way, I'm now with FoxSports.com. All right, so now there you go, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, it's FoxSports.com writer Jim Williams. And Jim, right off the bat, we have all this news with of course, Ryan Braun, the biogenesis, what may very well turn to be a scandal. What is your take on how the league has been handling this situation, and specifically with Ryan Braun, that what he gets is really a 65-game seeding because, hey, look, his team isn't doing well anyway, so it's not really a, it's like it's not, it's barely a slap on the wrist. What do you make of it? 
Well, it's a it's a approximately a three point five million dollar fine if you look at it this way. Uh, because those are those 65 games are games he cannot be paid for, and that's in a collective bargaining agreement. So, if he's out of baseball for 65 games, um, look at it as two things: one, he's being suspended, and um, he gets the scarlet letter for that; and secondarily, um, his fine is in excess of three million dollars. So you have a guy who now gets to sit for, uh, okay, so it's a little bit expensive seating. It's a three and a half a million dollars. It's pretty expensive. But nonetheless, in yeah. the eyes of his teammates, it can very well look. I mean, right now, what he, what they're seeing is we, as the collective unit of the Milwaukee Brewers organization, mm-hmm. are sitting pretty far away from a potential playoff position. Right. We have about 65 games left to go in the season. Right. We're probably not making the playoffs, and our best player right now on the roster is taking a vacation. What is it? How does? How are the players? How are his teammates dealing with this situation that they face every day now for the well, rest the, of the season? The players are dealing with it as one would hope they would, and that is there's disdain and in, in somewhat. Um, you know, other than Aaron Rodgers rushing to his um, um, to his aid, one of the most refreshing things here is to see that players are now angry that you know teammates are putting their livelihood in uh, in peril. I mean, actually, obviously, in the case of Braun, you know, he going forward is going to be difficult for him because. Again, he will have been considered obviously a liar in the first time around because if he didn't do it, and you know this whole situation has proven that he didn't, you know, then he wouldn't be in 65, you know, out for 65 games. So the 50 game suspension of last season that he that he skirted on that you know silly situation with the FedEx box, you know, this time around should have been 100, frankly, and for him to get 65, you know. Basically, that that sounds like a plea bargain to me. Um, but you look at the list beyond him, and there's guys like Texas Rangers Nelson Cruz, the Oakland Athletics Bartolo Colon, um, A. Rod. I mean, in the case of those three guys specifically, Nelson Cruz and the A's Bartolo Colon, you're talking about the possibility. Uh, if you take those guys off of the team, you know it's quite possible that you're literally hamstringing a team to um, to make the playoffs. So if I'm on that team and Bartolo Colon or you know uh, Nelson Cruz is gone from Texas, believe me, I'm upset because you know they are you know quote unquote my teammates and they lied to me. Well, we saw that a little bit last year with Milk Cabrera going right. out, you know, being suspended for 50 games for the rest of the season out with San Francisco. And they made it to the they, they made it as far as they did in spite of him, but when he was suspended, that was of course the question. Here's one of the hottest hitters in baseball. Obviously, now we know why, but he's being out for 50 games, but the team seemed to come together as a collective unit in spite of what happened off the field with Melky. And- no, actually, in point of fact, let's go back and, 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 and really break that down. What happened, as you, as you probably recall, is that the Giants got very, very lucky. And what was lucky for them was that the Rangers were – I'm sorry, not the Rangers. I must apologize. The Astros – were in a very selling mood. They wanted to dump salary. They were able to pick up Hunter Pence. Right. At the same time, purely by luck, you know, Pablo Sandoval, who had had injuries, was coming back to the team. So there was a a perfect storm, if you will. Yes, they lost Melky Cabrera, but they gained Hunter Pence and they gained a healthy uh, Pablo Sandoval. So they got lucky. I mean, uh, let's face it. You don't uh, if they don't give Hunter Pence 
and Sandoval doesn't come back, the Giants don't win the pennant. So, you know, you can't always hope that that somebody's going to step in and trade you, you know, an all-star right fielder, and your all-star third baseman is going to come back and and, uh, and perform as both of them did so well. So I think that uh, what we're seeing here, and what I think, as I said before, is so refreshing is that baseball players themselves are going on the record saying that this is not only bad for baseball, but it you know, it is affecting how they look at their teammates. And, you know, you're a cheater and in this particular case, if you're on a team and you're conceived you know, considered to be a cheater, it's a little more difficult for you to embrace that teammate. In terms of the team, in terms of the Milwaukee Brewers organization now, mm-hmm. when you look at what happened with the whole Ryan Braun, the whole package, he was tested and it was, you know, high levels and arbitration, all of that, what happened? It comes out that he is not guilty, that he is innocent, that he is clear, clean, clear, and all, and it's all good. Now the Milwaukee Brewers have to make a decision for Prince Fielder. Do we keep him? Do we keep Braun? Who do we keep? So, of course, there's not enough money for both. Fielder now is playing first base for Detroit. Do you think how, – how does the Milwaukee Brewers organization go forward from here now knowing that they were, in a, in a word, duped by Ryan Braun for their future? Well, that's like – you know, we all hear that what professional sports teams want – are quote unquote character guys. I think that there will be a great deal more emphasis on finding the backstory on as many of these players as they possibly can and finding out, you know, how and where and what they do with regards to anybody who has any concept behind them or even the inkling of the possibility that they've been involved with HGH or performance-enhancing drugs or any of that, I think there's a, you know, obviously there's always going to be a team that's going to take a chance. But I think for the most part that the quote-unquote contending teams are not going to do it because it's an investment or they may write into the contract that the contract is void. Right as we speak now, I mean, it's a big story. It's been a big story for almost a year now in uh in New York is that the Yankees are doing everything humanly possible to try to find a way to void A-Rod's contract. Right. So I think that, you know, if I'm the Milwaukee Brewers, you know, I've got seven lawyers looking at that contract to see if there's a way we can get out of paying Ryan Braun a penny. Now, in terms of baseball and everything that has been going on with the Biogenesis Clinic, with really, I don't want to go so far as to call it the witch hunt on steroids, but we'll call it, we'll, we'll leave it on. You know, they're they're trying to eradicate this from the league after it pretty right. much dominated the league in the in, in the nineties, really, uh, right. with everything that ha- happened then. How does this bode now that we have a, a so to speak a California poster boy, you know, guy next door type of person who has been found to have taken, have been found to been guilty of taking performance enhancement? Uh, substances in terms of all, most of the other players in the past couple of years who have been found are from Latino based backgrounds, Latin American countries. Now we have an American. How does this now bode for Major League Baseball in terms of their image and in terms of its future in this matter? Well, I think that Major League Baseball, in getting a, a handle and getting ahead of the, the story, so to speak, probably doesn't take as big a hit in large part because it although some fans say it matters to them if you look at the attendance figures if you look at the television ratings if you look at everything having to do with major league baseball it doesn't seem to be hurting them so from that standpoint i think that major league baseball probably um is doing of all the sports at this point in time, probably the best job of trying to root out the people who are uh, guilty of of cheating and uh, trying to get some 
uh, sort of um, competitive advantage. In, in terms now for the league and what they're trying to do with all of the players that need or have some sort of connection to the clinic, to the Biogenesis Clinic right. down in Florida, what does this now, based upon what we're seeing with what happened with this plea bargain, so to speak, with Braun, what does this mean for Alex Rodriguez and his possible future, be it in baseball or, as some people are saying, banned from baseball? Well, again, um, my guess is that a player with the reputation of Alex Rodriguez will have the same opportunity that uh, Braun did, and that is to sit down with the powers that be, likely with uh, first with the Yankees and then secondly with Major League Baseball, to plead their case and try to figure out how best, from a public relations standpoint, can this be handled. And um, I think that we'll find out in the very near future how that um, you know how that whole situation is going to go because, as I said, you know, the Ryan Braun thing was just the tip of the iceberg. There's three or four other people that will be dealt with, and there's as many as 20 players that eventually, in some way, shape, or form, could could be suspended for. Um, a minimum of 50 games, whether it's this year or, or, you know, going into next. So, you know, this is really just the beginning of the story, and, and I think that uh, uh, what we find out from the remaining 20-player situation and how uh, they're done, it's likely to be done, I suspect, because, again, remember, this is there's there's actual criminal charges that can be involved in this. You're dealing with it with a banned substance. If you, you know, yeah. I, you and I, cannot go out and get HGH or any kind of PED without a prescription from a doctor. Right. You know, so there are actual. Forget what's going on in baseball. These are actual crimes that are being committed. And it seems like that's what's also lost in this whole situation in the whole story is the potentiality for this to be blowing up beyond the diamond, beyond the baseball field, and in, in and into a, a judge's courtroom. And it's something that, of course, we're going to have to keep an eye out on as this story, of course, continues to unfold and continues to unravel and reveal itself in all its different facets and uh, and, and and see what happens, how, how it ends up uh, really showing itself and revealing itself down the road. Jim, as always, uh, you know, at this time... I. It used to be a we, but now it's an I. It's always a pleasure to have you on. And, of course, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. My pleasure, and uh, any time for you. And uh, hopefully next time we chat will be uh, about something less uh, onious as, uh, as performance-enhancing drugs. Uh, you got it. You're on for that. Okay. All right, take care now. That was Jim Williams, a former writer for the Washington Examiner, but now, of course, a writer for FoxSports.com. And you can read all of his opinions and all of his, of course, writings. Of course, you can just head on to FoxSports.com and check it out there. When I come back from the short commercial break, we'll be taking your phone calls. 856-330-4749 or your texts if you cannot make it to a phone line. You can send me a message, facebook.com forward slash sports talk with the sports rabbi or Twitter at the Yassi G. You're listening to Sports Talk with the Sports <laughs> Radio powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. It's been 48 years Connecticut School of Broadcasting has helped place thousands of people just like you in exciting careers in radio, television, and the new media. At Connecticut School of Broadcasting, our hands-on approach is different. It's designed to have you spend less time in the classroom and more time in the studios. From the first day, you'll work with state-of-the-art equipment. Learn by doing from our team of industry professionals who come from their studios to ours. The best part about it? You'll learn it all in a matter of months, not years. Connecticut School of Broadcasting has a network of 12 campuses from Massachusetts to Miami. Remember, it's never too late to love what you do. So do what I did. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO. Step into the fast-paced world of the broadcast media. Day and evening classes begin soon. Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Get trained and get connected now. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO or log on to GoCSB.com. 
Your computer is blowing up. Blowing up to the sounds of all noise radio. Powered radio. by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Welcome back, Sports Talk with on All Noise Radio, powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. And before we get continue on and take some of your phone calls and get some and read some texts and tweets that were sent out over uh, the commercial break, we have to give a thank you, of course, to Jim Williams from FoxSports.com for coming on last segment to discuss to break down this whole steroid situation, whole biogenesis, Ryan Braun, and of course what it means for the league in the future. But the question that I have, of course, we, we heard over the last day or so how Sean Kemp of the Los Angeles Dodgers, the runner-up to Ryan Braun for the 2011 National League MVP, has called for Braun to be stripped of his award, to be stripped of his MVP. Of course, that subsequently would mean that the award would go to him and... We also know that the Baseball Writers of America have come out and said no, that when the award was given, it was given, it's a case, closed deal, to Ryan Braun, end of story. They are not taking it back. Do you agree with that? Do you not agree with that? Let me know. Chime in 856-330-4749 or send me a message, facebook.com forward slash sports talk with the sports rabbi, or hit me up on Twitter at the G. And we have right now a message from... It just says why here on uh, – it's a message from why from Brooklyn from, uh, on, my, on my Facebook page saying, I totally agree that he should be stripped of his MVP. I guess that means he's referring to Ryan Braun being stripped of his MVP, and it should be given to Sean Kemp. Well, listen, here's the deal. I, I don't agree with that. I think that the MVP should be kept by Ryan Braun because when it was voted on, he was the guy. He was – innocent he was there was no reason to suspect him for anything because he was never found guilty at that point of course if you're going to start taking awards away from people awards away from players then well let's start stripping away career achievements start stripping away you know records let's say from Barry Bonds let's say records from from Mark McGuire and the list would go on and on there would be no real uh, way that you can now say yes or no. Where do you draw the line? Once I, I firmly believe that if you're going to go down the road and you're going to then take away something that was given to a player at a time where he was free and clear. I mean, there was no, there may have been a reason to suspect him of something, but there was no hard evidence against him. If you're going to retroactively remove such an award from a player, then you then that has to be something that you do for every single person who's ever accused of or possibly found guilty of using a performance enhancing drug or some sort of other substance like HGH or or some uh, illegal banned steroids. Of course, you're, it's not only Mark McGuire. I mean, you're talking Roger Clemens. Also, you're talking. Where do you draw the line? I think the, it's easy from here on out. Maybe you want to say, okay, let's change perhaps some of the way that we we look at things some of the ways that we judge things we approach things the rules the regulations perhaps to say in the future that any mvp let's say for argument's sake from here on out who is voted as mvp if he is found to have taken something of a banned substance then we the baseball writers of america are able to retroactively remove that MVP award and give it to the next person in line. You want to do that from here on out? I have no problem with that. But I have a problem with doing it now because there is no benchmark for it at this point in time. If you want to say for the future, no problem. Let me know what your thoughts are. 856-330-4749 or send me a Facebook message for facebook.com forward slash sports talk with the sports rabbi or a Twitter message at the Yossi G. Let me know how you're feeling. Let me know what you're thinking. We go back to the Twitter message board 
And we have here from Sam856. Sam says, hey, listen, you're all wrong with this. The MVP should should not go in with Braun. It should go to Kemp. It should not be in a house of, of, a, of a cheater. Listen, I get where you're coming. Sam, I get where you're going with this. I, I get where you're where you want to to lay blame on on something that was done you you know there is the argument to say that Ryan Braun got the MVP while he was juicing because they found the test results were of course done in October of 2011 so of course that lends to believe that he was juicing the entire 2011 season but you have to remember there was no there was nothing before this. There's nothing now even to say that we're the Baseball Writers of America or it is even fair and right and legitimate for them to go back and pull something away for when it was given, it seemed like it was given at a legitimate portion, a place in time and things like that. Of course, you want to get in on the conversation, 856-330-4749. Looks like we have a caller on the air. Caller, who are you and where are you calling from? Caller? Looks like we lost the caller. Caller, call back uh, when you can. We'll get you right back on the air. 856-330-4749. Again, when you're talking about this whole situation with Braun, you also have to remember how this affects his teammates, how it affects the future of the organization. It looks like we have the caller uh, who just, for uh, some reason, Ha, uh, I guess got cut off. Caller, who are you and where are you calling from? Hey, this is deep voice Brian Hoffman, the voice of Baltimore sports. So I guess uh, that means you're calling from Baltimore then. Oh, yeah, the home of the uh, it's kind of orange around here these days. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. Brian from Baltimore, or shall I call you deep voice, Brian? Uh, so, of course, we have a question now here on on the show, Sports Talk with Sports Rally, going on. What is, of course, your opinion with Sean Kemp's saying that Ryan Braun should be stripped of the MVP award that he won in 2011? I mean, it's, I mean, it's an interesting, you know, specific topic of debate. You know, it, it kind of, it, it kind of shadows a little bit the, the situation with USC, Pete Carroll, uh, Reggie Bush, similar Heisman situation there. Reminds me of the Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Barry Bond situation with the home runs. I mean, the question is, where, where are we looking at this? Are we looking at this from a, a legal perspective? Or are we looking at this from from an ethical perspective? In my mind, it's of the ethics of the game that one does not use performance-enhancing drugs. However, uh, unlike a uh, Mr. Andrew Gershman, I don't go out to uh, to judge people. You know who knows about you know what exactly Mr. Braun did here. Uh, you know as far as to strip him of a certain title, I mean it's just like a debate that I started on my Facebook uh, not too long before the All Star break, which was that if Chris Davis, who's been a little slow now for about five games after the All Star break. If Chris Davis were to get 62, which would actually be the AL mark, would he also arguably be the new home run king over McGuire, Sosa, and Bond simply because we all know that um, this guy is most probably not juicing. I mean, players now to juice would just be rather stupid and doing so just to collect a paycheck, basically. Well, when you look at what the players have access to, it's not like everybody else has the same access in a sense where they can walk the streets, let's say, of Tijuana, Mexico, and find somebody who can make something that is banned in baseball but make it in a way that it's undetectable because they have the money to do this. Not everybody's able to do something like that. And in terms of what we're talking, what the question that I posed before you phoned in about Sean Kemp saying that Braun should be stripped of his MVP award, I don't think he should be stripped of the award at all because when it was done, when it was voted on by the baseball by the baseball writers of, of America, there was no reason to say that Braun was juicing. There was accusations 
but there was nothing proven. So, right, in a, in a legal sense, in a similar sense to why you can't have an asterisk and, you know, next to Barry Bonds, possibly. I don't even know the full legal, you know, principles there, but, you know, legally in baseball, was there actually a policy in place against steroids, and then how could you put an asterisk next to the name? I mean... I'm a huge fan of the uh, of the uh, WWE. You know, people hate wrestling, you know, because it's wrestling. It's not real. Yeah, it's entertainment. You, That's why they changed the F to these the E. Guys are ripped, and everybody knows in the '80s, guys like Hulk Hogan. You know, half these guys are dead now. Macho Man was doing steroids. He's dead at close to 50 because of it. But these guys realize the toll, or possibly realize the toll that it's going to take on their bodies. Um, you know, these kind of things. Like you said, I mean, money money's area. As long as there's money, there's going to be, you know, better and better drugs out there. Um, and uh, it, it's not going to necessarily stop. My point has always been, why are you going to have Major League Baseball should blame themselves the most? Uh, 100%. Uh, but... with, with what happened with baseball was you look at what happened in the 90s. And it was almost as if they were telling the players, go juice, because it's better for the game. It gets us better ratings. It'll get you better endorsements, because everybody is captivated. And it, of course, was capped off in 1998 with the home run chase, the chase of Roger Maris's record. Everybody and their grandmother was watching every at-bat of Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, and at least in the beginning, Ken Griffey Jr. as well, before he tapered off and finished the season under 60 home runs. Everybody was interested in... America's pastime. But once the Major League Baseball got this in their head that, you know, we should probably get away from it. We should probably make the game clean. And, you know, we kind of feel bad of what we've done already. Not only giving an allowance by turning a blind eye to the players, this is something that is both banned in the United States and would soon be banned by baseball as well, but something that is inherently bad for the body. As, as you brought up the point, a good point also, of oh, look at all the players who have died relatively young ages from the NFL to baseball to the NHL, all the players who've had all these post-career problems with health because they took drugs. Not that it's known in the public that they took drugs, but most likely it was the era, it was the thing to do. So when you look at baseball, they have the issue for themselves to clean up their own image. And, of course, we're going to be giving baseball credit and Bud Selig all the kudos to him for trying to clean up the sport. But it, the buck stops with the sport itself, with management, with, with owners, ownership. They have to take the onus on them to make sure that from here on out they do something for themselves to make their image better because this is a a a real you know it, it's a twist it's a turn we're not sure which way to to look at this because you have baseball on one hand in one era was sending a message go do drugs and now in this current era is saying stay away from it either which way uh deep voice thanks very much for the call and uh until next time when you can chime back in i mean thanks so much for you know having me i, I agree you know so much with your sentiments it is possibly even a larger question just baseball and as far as where do you draw lines a country look what just happened to von miller who happens to play in denver colorado who just got uh tagged for four games for pot the pot he's saying didn't do nothing wrong pot's legal in colorado so what what kind of message are we sending to the kids you know the specific issue in baseball there's possibly a larger issue in society of what kind of a a hypocritical society are we possibly becoming, which we're saying, yes, it's some things, no, at other things. People know what they're putting to their bodies. They should know the sciences. These are wrestlers that died at 50. They possibly knew their bodies would break down. So does A-Rod and everybody. And but, uh, uh, it's a big problem what we're teaching our children these days. Sorry to go on that tangent. Nah, no problem. Dude, but again, don't. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. No, my pleasure. My pleasure. Of course, next time you're, you're, uh, you're around, and feel free to chime in. And, of course, we'd love to hear from you, love to get your take on everything that is revolved around sports and specifically all around Baltimore. Thanks so much for calling. Oh, yeah. Have a good one. You as well. That was Deep Voice Brian from Baltimore. Of course, you have to chime in if you have an opinion on the matter. Sean Kemp saying, should Ryan Braun be stripped of his 2011 NH, uh, 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 National League MVP award or not?
Let me know when we come back from the break. We'll take some more of your phone calls as well as your texts and tweets. 856-330-4749. You're listening to Sports Talk. Mm -hmm. Noise Radio powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. You know, our jobs occupy more than half our waking hours. Shouldn't we be doing something we love? Call Connecticut School of Broadcasting at 1-800-TV-RADIO or log on to GoCSB.com. Since 1964, Connecticut School of Broadcasting, with a network of 12 campuses from Massachusetts to Miami, has helped place thousands of grads as DJs, sportscasters, entertainment reporters, behind the scenes in audio and video production, every aspect of the broadcast media. Connecticut School of Broadcasting has trained men and women of all ages and backgrounds in a matter of months, not years. Learn by doing from area radio and TV pros. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO or log on to GoCSB.com. Remember, it's never too late to love what you do. Day and evening classes begin soon. Get trained. Get connected now. All Noise Radio. The noise. The noise. You can't ignore.
Noise Radio. Powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. All Noise Radio is an internet radio station that's fully produced by graduates of the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. From modern rock to old school hip hop, country to classical, news, talk, sports, and more. It's the noise you can't ignore. Log on to allnoiseradio.com. Fire up the station. Find out more about your favorite jocks. Get the latest CSB news and more. Plus, you can take All Noise Radio with you on the go for free. Just download the Live 365 app to your iPhone, iPod Touch, or BlackBerry and search All Noise Radio. Check out tomorrow's broadcasters today at allnoiseradio.com. Powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Your computer is blowing up, blowing up to the sounds of All Noise Radio. Powered radio. by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting.